welcome to Barrier Temple International Church's podcast. I am your host, Timothy, and we're here together on this beautiful day to hear from God. So let's all prepare ourselves to receive what God has in store for us today. Let's begin. Well, I am excited to be here this morning and to be able to share what God has laid upon my heart. Uh, it is something that has been on my heart for uh, quite a while, and I didn't know when I was going to get to share it. I didn't know when I was going to get to uh, get it off of, of my chest, get it out of uh where God has placed it. It's just something that I wanted to share. And when Pastor Mike uh, gave me the opportunity to preach this morning, I knew exactly what I would be sharing with you today. And so what I'm going to share with you is something of a reminder of the God that we serve. And I think it's fitting as we're here on the very last Sunday of 2023, we're getting ready to, to cross over into a new year. And this past year, Pastor Mike has taken us through the I Am series where we learned about the characteristics of the God that we serve. And we serve a big, powerful, mighty, awesome God. We learned that he's Jehovah Jireh, the great provider. He provides for our needs. You know, uh, Brother Stephen, I really appreciate you sharing your story. This time last year, our family was in the worst financial situation uh, ever. Similar situation, Sarah had lost her job unjustly, unexpectedly, and I don't want to go into great details, but it looked like we were done for. But we serve Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. We serve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above more than what we could think or ask. And I don't know about you, but I can think a lot. When I look around this building, I can think of all the amazing things that can take place here. I can ask for the money to fix the parking lot, the money to, to redo every room that we go to. And we serve a God who is able. We serve a God who is Jehovah Jireh. We serve a God, recently we talked about Jesus Christ as the Prince of Peace. Pastor Mike shared from that prophecy in Isaiah where he would be the, the mighty God, the great counselor, the prince of peace. He could bring peace to situations that seem impossible. He can bring peace in the midst of the storm. That is the God that we serve. We learned about all of those names and I could go through each and every one of them because they have significance and they tell us who God is. We serve a God who is able. We serve a God who breathed the stars into existence. You know, my uh, college degree is in uh, social studies education. And I was this close to, to, to being a science teacher instead of a, a history teacher because I really love science. I really especially love astronomy the the study of the stars and I was able as elective class to take a few astronomy classes in college and I love learning about stars they're so massive we can't even uh, understand the scale of how big stars are how powerful they are and the God that we serve said let there be and they were there he breathed them into existence any beautiful scenery animal flower that that you like he said, let it be, and it was. He didn't even do anything. He didn't have to, to, to make it with his hands. He said, let it be, and it happened. We serve the God of creation. We serve the God of angel armies. We can read about him utilizing one single angel in the Old Testament to defeat an entire army. One single angel killed 185,000 of those soldiers because the king and the leader of that army said, I'm bigger than God, I'm better than God. And God says, well, watch this. I'll send one angel and see what you can do. We serve a God of angel armies. And we serve a God of salvation. We just celebrated Christmas. I hope everyone had a blessed Christmas. I hope you enjoyed spending time with your family. I hope that, that you were able to uh, enjoy that, that time of the season. But the reason that we celebrate that is that that big, mighty God that we serve, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, He was willing to come in human form 
be born as a baby, and for one purpose, to die on the cross for our salvation. He's the God of salvation, a God who was willing to shed his blood so that even though it should have been impossible, every single one of us have sinned. We uh, have a debt that we should never be able to pay off. We can never be good enough. We can never do enough to, to earn that salvation. But Jesus Christ came as that first gift of Christmas and died on the cross 33 and a half or so years later, just so we could have communication with God. That is the God we serve. So you may say, well, why, why is Pastor John just uh, retreading all of the things that, that Pastor Mike went over this year? Maybe he doesn't have a sermon. Maybe he doesn't, uh, maybe he's stumped. Well, but the reason that, that I'm bringing that up is because three words that came to my mind a, a, a few weeks ago, and God really laid this on my mind, three simple words. The title of my sermon today is, He Still Does. We serve a God who all of those things are true. We could read about in the Old Testament. We can read about in the New Testament the mighty things that he has take, done in people's lives. We heard about it this morning. We heard, you know, people were given new years. People were, were given uh, new jobs. People were, uh, saw miracles take place in their life. We hear about it every week. That is the God that we serve. He is not a respecter of persons. He will do it for every single one of his children. If you have made that commitment, if you have asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, he is going to do that. Because the God that we serve does not change. <clears throat> he does not change. Uh, that is my, my first point for today is he doesn't change. So before we talk about what he still does, we have to remember the fact that he does not change. The first scripture verse that I'm going to share this morning is, is uh, 1 Hebrews 13.8. Uh, it's one that's very dear to my heart. It's a very short verse, not the, the shortest in the Bible, but it is, is a very short, short verse. It simply says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's a very simple verse. Uh, it's a very good one to teach to kids. You know, I remember when my twins were, I think, in the range of two to three, they learned this verse. We've, we've used it in kids' church because it's an important verse, and it, it, it's short and to the point. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when we read about mighty things taking place in the Old Testament or the New Testament, or you hear about it on, on Facebook or from your friend at, at, at work or school, God will do that in your life. He doesn't change. Sometimes it, it's hard for us to uh, think about the fact that God has always been and will always be. You know, each and every single one of us have a beginning. You know, I have a, a birth date. October 23rd, 1980 was the day that, that I was born. You know, mine and Sarah's anniversary is September 29th, 2005. Every... Uh, one of us has some date like that. Maybe you have a date that you remembered you started your, your job or you graduated uh, college. Everybody has important dates for, for beginnings of things. I used to work at, at a children's home, and many of the clients that, that I dealt with were adopted. And so they had a birth date, and then they had a gotcha day, a day that they became a part of another family. And that was something where it, they began the, the change of a name, the, the, the beginning of something new. Every single one of us has that. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Holy Spirit, do not have a beginning. You know, sometimes we like to say, happy birthday to Jesus. This is where we remember Jesus' birthday. But that was not Jesus' beginning. We know in, in uh, John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. He has always been, and he will always be, and he will never change. We can also look in uh, James chapter 1, verse 17. And it says, Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. The God that we serve does not change. He is always good. He is always Jehovah Jireh. He is always Jehovah Nisi. He is always Jehovah Shalom. He is always the Prince of Peace. He doesn't take holidays. He doesn't take sick days. He doesn't take time off. And he does not change. 
So as we spend just a few moments this morning talking about some of the things that God still does and some of the things that God wants to do in 2024, we need to remember that He never changes. So what are some things that He still does? The first thing that we're going to talk about this morning is the fact that He still does miracles. I serve a miracle-working God. If you have Jesus in your uh, life today as Lord of your your life, you serve a miracle-working God. He is not going to run out of miracles anytime soon. He is a God who can save. He is a God who can deliver. He is a God that can take you through financial situations, relational situations. Whatever it is, God can make a way even if it seems impossible. Even if it seems like it should not match up with the laws of nature, the laws of time. Because guess what? God created the laws of nature, the laws of medicine. So when, when you have someone that walks into a doctor's office and, and they say the, the diagnosis is cancer, it's going to be cancer. This is a situation that happened in my life. With, with my mom, she walked in and the doctor said, listen, we're going to do surgery. I just want you to prepare. This is going to be cancer. We can tell by the pictures it's going to be cancer. Uh, here's the treatments. They don't look that great. And when the surgery came around and the doctor came to talk to me and my dad, he said, listen, I don't know what to tell you. We got in there and there is not a lick of cancer. There's just some benign tumors that, that look completely different and... There is no cancer in in your mom and, and to my dad, to your wife at all. That is the God that we serve. We serve a God who still does miracles. And I guarantee if I gave this microphone and, and we had the time to go through this, this congregation, we would hear story after story of God doing miracles in people's lives. Because that is the God that we serve and he does not change. He is a miracle working God. Sometimes when I think about miracles, uh, the, the first one that comes to mind from the Old Testament to me is always the parting of the Red Sea. And I think it's probably for all the years of teaching Sunday school and teaching kids church and, and youth. And, and that's always a, a story that comes up no matter what curriculum you use, no matter what age group you're, you're teaching. The, the Red Sea always comes up. And one thing that's kind of funny to me is, is the fact that, that they make the little flannel graphs and the, the pictures and it looks like, you know, 15 people crossing a creek. <laughs> but that is not what took place. That is not what happened. It was over a million people that had to cross this huge expanse of sea. And they were, were, were up against this big, huge body of water that they could not cross on their own. And this army, the most powerful, mighty army in the world was, was barreling down to take them back into captivity. And they needed a miracle. And God, through Moses, used him as a mighty tool to, to part that Red Sea. And over a million people walked across on dry ground. And then when that big army caught up, they're like, oh, look, there's a path. We'll follow him. Guess what? The, <clears throat> the guy... Excuse me. The God that I serve smashed that water down onto that that army and took them out. We serve a God who is big. We serve a God who is mighty. And we serve a God who still does miracles. Don't mind me. I'm just grabbing my water. I have a frog in my throat. (laughs) But we serve a God who still does miracles. We, we think about the, the New Testament. Think about all of the mighty things that Jesus Christ performed, the miracles that we read about. He, he brought the little girl back to life. He brought Lazarus back to life. He healed every kind of sickness imaginable. The, the thing that was, seemed uncurable, that seemed impossible at that time, was, was leprosy. He cured leprosy. He did it all. And that is the God that we serve. We heard stories this morning of God working and moving. He still does miracles. I don't know what miracle you have facing you right now. I don't know what miracle you're in need of. You might have a, a spiritual giant that, that is standing in your way. You may have a physical ailment. I don't know, but I know we serve a God who still does miracles. And how do I know that we can still expect that? You know, some people will say, oh, well, that, that just happened in the Old Testament for God to show, show his mighty power. And in the New Testament, it was just to get Christianity started. 
But I'm here to tell you that is not accurate. Let's take Jesus from his own words. We're going to turn to John chapter 14. And this is Jesus sharing with his disciples. And we're going to read verse 12. Jesus was at the, the end of his ministry and he was trying to share with his disciples all that he could. And they weren't quite always getting it, but this is what he, he tells them. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works. Because I am going to be with the Father. So he said it. He said you, not me, not Pastor Mike. Not, not Brother Raph. He said, you, anyone who believes. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, whether you're a teenager, whether you are uh, 99, or whether you're a little kid, he can use you to do mighty miracles. It says right there, from Jesus himself, people are going to be able to do even mightier things than what he performed. And guess what? His disciples, while they didn't quite get it when he was telling them there, they would go on to do mighty things. We hear about stories of Peter literally walking, and, and I'm up here, I can see my shadow. He would walk down the street, and his shadow would touch individuals with sickness, and they would become healed just from touching his shadow. Paul, all the mighty uh, things that happened in his life, time and time again when he should have been killed, time and time again God rescued him and did miraculous signs. He was bitten by a poisonous snake. He just shook it off into the fire and said, the God I serve will save me. That is the same power that you and I have. He still does miracles. He's not going to run out. He didn't uh, use them all up in 2023. As we start a new year, the God that we serve still does miracles. And guess what? My next point is, yes, he does miracles, but he still loves to use broken people. He still loves to use individuals that think, oh, maybe I'm not enough. Maybe I don't have enough uh, degrees behind my name. Maybe I'm, I'm too young. I know a lot of times teenagers have that, that mindset. Well, we'll let the adults do that. When I get to be an adult, then I can, can be the mighty warrior for God. I'm telling you today that whether you think you're enough or not, God believes that you are. God sees you as that mighty warrior. You know, one of my favorite Bible stories is the story of Gideon. Gideon, uh, when, when we uh, meet him, he is hiding out for his life in a wine press, trying to, to get enough flour to make bread for his family so they don't starve. He is scared for his life, and this angel of the Lord is sent to him. And what does the angel say? Oh, I see you there hiding out. Oh, you're, you're scared. Gideon, you need to get yourself together. No, the angel, the message that, that that angel had from God is, Gideon, you are a mighty warrior of God. Gideon did not see himself as a mighty warrior, but guess what? That is the way that God saw Gideon, and that is the way that God sees you. He loves to use broken people. Look throughout the Bible, look throughout the history of the church. God uses individuals that others would not pick, that others would say, oh, they're, they're not the, the right fit. Look at the disciples. They were fishermen, which was one of the lowest. Uh, people saw fishermen as, as dirty, as foul-mouthed, as drunkards. They didn't want to be around fishermen. And most of Jesus' close disciples were fishermen. And then he had tax collectors. They were even more hated than fishermen because they stole everybody's money. And nobody likes people messing with their money, right? And that's what tax collectors did. First, they got money for the Roman occupying government. And then they also took extra and put it in their own pockets. They were crooks. And he had a tax collector. He had a zealot. Someone who was willing to go and kill to... Uh, uh, forward their ideology, someone who was a rebel, who was uh, not who anybody else would want to pick to be on their ministry team. But Jesus said, I see that, that heart. I see that you can be more than what you are right now. And that is how he sees you today. He sees you as, as more than what you see yourself. Uh, we're going to go to Ephesians uh, chapter 2 and, and read a verse that has... Uh, kind of been 
really since I started youth ministry, a verse that has really stuck out. And for, for 2023, it's been a verse that I share almost every uh, Wednesday night. Uh, a verse that I know Pastor Sarah, Sarah shares a lot as well in, in kids' church. But it's not just for kids. It is for everybody. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. So I know I still struggle getting up in the morning and when I look in the mirror, I don't see a masterpiece. And I'm sure some of us here today, if we're honest, when you wake up, you don't see a masterpiece. And when God is placing something on your heart to talk to somebody, to share your faith, to, to face a situation, and you may say, I'm not strong enough, I'm not good enough, I don't know enough of, of God's word, I, I don't have enough time uh, uh, in prayer, I just became a Christian Whatever your excuse is, God sees you as his masterpiece. If you've made that commitment to serve him, if you've asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, he sees you as a masterpiece. And, and from that verse, we, we know it's not just a masterpiece to, to sit on the, the window, sit on the, the mantle, wherever you want to sit something nice in your house. He says he gave us that salvation so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. God has good plans for us, and that's what we're going to talk about here in, here in just a moment. But he does not see you as weak. He does not see you as uh, dealing with anxiety. He does not see you as someone who is defined by a sickness, an ailment, whatever it is. He sees you as a child of the Most High God and as His masterpiece. He sees you for, for all that, that you can be because He sees the heart. That, that verse that we read earlier uh, 1 James 17, if we would have read on, that, that verse would tell us that we are God's prized possession. We are special to God, and He loves to use broken people to do mighty works. He still does miracles. He's not going to run out any time soon. He still uses broken people to do mighty things. And guess what? He still has big plans. <clears throat> and the reason why I have he still has plans, dot, 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 is I'm going to talk about two of the big plans that he has, or two groups of, of plans, however you want to say it, that he has. I could sp sit here all afternoon and talk about all the big plans that God has. But first and foremost, I want to tell you, God has big plans for you. For you as an individual, doesn't matter your age, your background, how much money that you have in the bank, God has big plans for your life. We're going to look at Jeremiah 29. This is a, a, a promise given to the children of Israel. And as we know, when we accept Jesus to be the Lord of our life, we are grafted in, adopted in to God's family. So we can claim those same promises for us. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. God has a plan for your life. Take that verse, write it down, highlight it, <clears throat> put it somewhere, and remember it. Learn it. Get God's word in our heart. I would encourage everyone to memorize scripture. I know that's easier for some than others. You know, in, in, in my household, some of my kids can memorize Scripture really well. It's easy, it's natural, and some of them struggle with it. But guess what? All of us can memorize something. And I would recommend finding some verses that really speak to you and get those down in your heart. And this is one that, that I know I go to often. Because God is reminding us that no matter what we're facing, no matter the situation, what it looks like, God has a plan for my life. And I'm here to remind every single person, whether you're here in person, listen online, that God has a plan for your life as well. And it's a good plan to give you a future and a hope. It's not a plan for disaster. It's not a plan uh, just to, to make it through. You know, I think sometimes as um, we become a, an older Christian. You know, I've been saved since I was, was a little kid and, and been in church my whole life. I feel like I was born and raised in church. 
And sometimes we get the idea we know and we're looking forward to heaven, which is our blessed hope. But we forget that we don't have to wait to heaven to, to experience Jesus Christ. We can experience Jesus and the power in his presence just like we did here this morning at Berea Temple International Church in St. Louis, Missouri. And I'm here to tell you that you can experience the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your home, in your school, in your place of work. That is the God that we serve, a God that has plans for your life, plans that are good, and plans to prosper you. So go home today and think about all the things that God has planned for 2024. And if you start to think, oh, I think he's leading me in that direction, but I don't know if I can. You know, Sister Vicki was talking about that, this, this year being a year of first. Let's let 2024 be an even bigger year of first. Let's build on all of the things that, that have taken place. And we didn't know if we could do it, but God did. We didn't know if, if we would be able to, to do Seek and Save. You know, that is a huge event. The, the list of churches across the United States that were chosen to host Seek and Save is very small. And it was a blessing that, that God chose Berea Temple to be a host church for that event. Let's do something even bigger and better in 2024. And that leads me to my, my last, he still has big plans. You see the picture there? It's a very old picture of Berea Temple. God still has plans for Berea Temple International Church. And I know, uh, you know, I've only been here six months, but I've already started to, to kind of just accept some of the things. Oh, this is old. That's just Berea. This, this doesn't work. Oh, that, that's just Berea. God's still working and moving. And we don't have to have a, a nice building for the presence of God to be here. He can, can be anywhere, anytime. He doesn't care what the building looks like. But as we look around, and I know recently we talked about the parking lot, we might hit some of those bumps and like, oh man, well, why can't we have a new parking lot? We may be sitting in our Sunday school classroom and see some things that, that seem outdated that, that we wish we could fix. But I'm here to tell you, we serve a God who is able to do, and if he wants to fix our parking lot, he can provide the money for that to happen. If he wants to, to fix the, the building around us, we serve a God who is able. He is still Jehovah Jireh. But I, I don't know if he's going to bring in the money for, for the parking lot. I don't know what's going to happen in 2024 uh, structurally. But I know if we band together as a group of believers, God is going to do mighty works. And we are going to, to outreach this community, outreach the international community around us. We are in the heart of a city that needs Jesus Christ. We are in the heart of a city that needs the compassion and love of the Holy Spirit. People are dying. Sister Vicki mentioned it. Every moment that I'm taking a breath, someone is passing away. And some of those people do not know Jesus Christ. Let's make sure that we are doing all that we can to spread God's message, to spread God's word to St. Louis. And I can tell you, God still has plans for Berea Temple International Church. I know he has plans for kids ministry and youth ministry and, and, and the prayer ministry. I know he has plans to start new things. And as I uh, pr prepare to close, I want us to, to be in a place as we start 2024 to be asking, what does God want to do in my life? How does God want to use me to do something big and mighty at Berea Temple? Because like I've said it before, God does not need a single one of us, even Pastor Mike, he does, doesn't need him. You could think of the most holy person that, that comes to mind. He could do it alone, but God wants to use you. He wants to use individuals. He wants to use broken people. Just like that miracle that always comes to mind of, of the, the parting of the Red Sea, God used a very broken, messed up man, Moses, to do that miracle. Moses thought he couldn't even speak right. When God appeared to him in a burning bush, Moses said, no, choose someone else. I can't even speak right. And God said, no, you're it. You're, you're going to do it. And God used him in a mighty way. God wants to use you. So as I close, I'm going to pray. And the, the praise team is going to sing one final song. I would encourage you this morning 
First and foremost, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you have not asked him to be the Lord and Savior of your life, come down here this morning. Come and meet Jesus Christ. Me and other prayer members will come and pray with you. If you have a healing need, if you have a miracle that you are in need of, come this morning. Someone will pray with you. If you just want to meet God here at these altars and ask him what big plan, what big purpose he has for you in 2024, this is the place to do it. Dear Lord, we do thank you and praise you for your blessings. We thank you for all that you have done. Lord, I thank you in advance for the mighty works that we are going to see at Berea Temple. I thank you in advance for the mighty works and testimonies that are going to come from the lives of the individuals that are here and the lives that are represented at Berea Temple. Lord, I know that you still do. You still work miracles. You still use broken people and you still have big plans. Lord, if there is anyone here that does not know you. I ask that your sweet Holy Spirit would tug on their hearts. I ask that your spirit would remain in this place and that you would continue to do mighty works. It is in your name that I do pray. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Real Temple International Church Podcast. We hope that you've been blessed and inspired by today's message. To stay connected with our church community, download our BTIC app from your phone's app store or follow and subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen. We would love to hear your thoughts or questions on today's topic, so please feel free to share them with us in the comments or by sending us a message through the app. If you found today's episode helpful, please consider sharing it with a friend, a team member, or in social media. Your support helps us reach even more with these inspiring messages. As we close out today's episode, let us remember to keep working in the Lord's finding until Christ comes. Maranatha. And as always, don't forget to tune in next time for another inspiring message. See you soon.